Hi, welcome to the Wisdom of Your Soul. I'm your host, Janice Mary. I'm so glad you're back. Um, as always, we talk about here how to connect to this wisdom that lives within us um, and really how to improve our lives, how to settle down our thoughts and feelings so that we can really embrace and um, bring forward the bigger part of us that really can enhance our lives in ways that you know we're not taught and we're not aware of. Um, you know, we can get so involved and I can see it in myself and I see it in my clients. We get so involved, um, in our thoughts and our feelings and our lives. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's, uh, it's being human. Um, so it's natural, but there is, uh, there's, there is much more to us. If you give yourself a chance to kind of tap into this other wisdom that lives within you. And, um, you know, the trick to do that really is to, realize that the thoughts and feelings that we're living in are really our story and it is from our perceptions and that doesn't devalue it um, but it helps us to see that you know maybe we can reconsider it a little bit and move away from some of these thoughts and feelings so that we can tap into another part of us which is our spirit our soul um, that that holds much more information and um, guidance and intuition um, and uh, all, all kinds of fun gifts that you have within you that you don't even realize you have. It's like connecting to the spirit with you with, within yourself here as a human person um, can make you feel very magical and very spiritual and very um, whole and complete in a different way than when you're not connected to it. I find that when I over identify with my thoughts and feelings you know, that can keep me really busy, you know, and it can also keep us really unhappy. Um, so that's what's really important for us to realize that thinking um, about our past, there's nothing wrong with it, and thinking about our future, there's nothing wrong with it. But you do have to kind of take your temperature and say, well, where is that leaving me? You know, if I'm thinking about my past and I'm feeling happy and it's energizing, well, that's great. Um, but if you're thinking about your past and what you did wrong and your regrets and what you shouldn't have done, um, that can be not so helpful. I mean, helpful to a point where we want to learn from our, our mistakes and, and kind of say, all right, well, I wish I did this differently or I wish, you know, I, I didn't, um, you know, take that job or I wish I didn't, you know, marry that person or, you know, whatever it is that you have regrets. There's, there's nothing wrong with visiting that from time to time. But I can see with myself and with my clients is that there, there is a tendency to just get stuck um, and to get stuck around themes. And so you want to notice these themes of your life and you want to help yourself not get stuck in the same thoughts and feelings because as you can see, it, it starts to feel um, boring. You know, it starts to feel like, well, I'm always feeling this way. I'm always thinking these thoughts. Um, so we have much, much more control than we're taught about that so there's a couple of things that I always notice with myself and I always notice it with my clients is that first we have the thoughts that just come into our mind and you know they ran they can be random thoughts or they could be thoughts about things that have happened and those thoughts that come in is sort of like the tape recording of the world um, what we've kind of integrated and a lot of um, my clients will come into therapy feeling like bad for having those thoughts and feeling like they are those thoughts. So I always have to try to help people understand that the thoughts that kind of hit you and come in, they're not who you are. Because if they were who you are, you wouldn't be like, wow, that's a weird thought, you know, or oh, that's a horrible thought. Why did I think that? Um, you know, it's not who you are. Those are the just thoughts kind of coming in. Coming in. And you're not responsible for those thoughts, but what we are responsible for, and which I feel like makes a big difference in my life and the life of my clients, is that when those thoughts come in, if you believe them or not, you know, if, so if you have a, a bad thought that comes in about yourself or about somebody else and you believe it, that starts to set off this whole domino effect within you that could be really hurtful and painful. So, so the first thing that you want to do when thoughts come in is to kind of like, you know, kind of just watch them, you know, and kind of just be entertained by them a little bit. Almost like you're watching a movie or, um, 
you know, listening to somebody else talk so that you don't over identify with them so much. That's, and, and the reason we want to do that is because we don't want to take them in, you know, so if I'm having thoughts that are not good about myself, I don't want to take those thoughts in, you know, so if I'm having a thought that's saying, well, you're not good enough and you don't have anything to say and, and, you know, what's this life really about? And if all those kind of thoughts are coming in and I engage with that, you know, that makes for not a very good day, you know. So you want to recognize where you want to, you want to kind of say, oh, well, that's really interesting. That's really pretty negative. You know, I, I wonder why all these thoughts that are coming in are so negative. And have I been around a, neg- a lot of negative people lately that I'm absorbing a lot of negativity? Am I watching the news constantly? Um, am I around people that are just like saying negative things constantly? Like, where's all this coming from? And let me just try to move away from it. Let me try to detach from it and move away from it. And we don't even want to get into the fact, is it true? Is it not true? Is, you know, you don't even have to get into that. You can just kind of move away from it. And I find where we have a lot more power, and I notice this with myself, um, is talking to you, is when you're talking to yourself, because that voice is you. So if you're talking to yourself in a way that's really kind and gentle and loving, that impacts you and then it also impacts these thoughts. You know, it almost kind of puts them on hold a little bit because you can't have two conflicting things going on at the same time. So if I'm, so if I wake up in the morning and I'm not feeling that great, and an idea comes in my mind like, oh, I wish I didn't do that. Or, you know, I miss my daughter. Uh, you know, oh, you know, she's never going to be living with me again. And, and if I start entertaining those thoughts, you could see where that could lead me. That could lead me down this rabbit hole of poor me. Oh, you know, I'm so sad. I'm alone. You know, I, I miss my daughter. You know, it could go down this really bad path. So instead, what I, I would do is say um, to those thoughts, Yes, understandable. I can understand how you would feel that loss, that pain. But look at your life and look at her life. Look at how well you're doing and look at how well she's doing. So that shift um, and that adding that conversation to those thoughts helps so much. And then to so so then when you're in, and I don't know if you, I would want to say it's positive, but I think it is the other half of that story. So if thoughts that are coming in that are really negative, we want to give the other half of the story. So I know there's a lot about pe- you know trying to be positive, trying to be positive. That never really has worked for me. But what really does work for me is realizing all those thoughts that are coming in and I'm engaging with and now thinking and entertaining and believing that what's the other half of that story? Yeah, that's true. I miss my daughter and, and you know, um, you know, if we never lived together, there's a sadness in that. And um, so there's there's time to feel that and, and, to, and to be in that. But then there's the other half and we never give the other half a voice. And that other half is so soothing. And the other half really helps us get through life because there's good and bad in every single situation. But we tend to just focus on the bad and stay in the bad and keep rehearsing the bad and keep bringing up those scenarios over and over so that it's almost like we're saying the same things all the time. Sometimes my clients will say, you must be so sick of me saying the same thing over and over. So on some level, they're realizing they're saying the same things over and over. And I realize it too. So, you know, there is a way out of this whole mechanism that's happening being a human person. And really that is always saying, well, first of all, the thoughts that hit me that just come in are not me. So I have a choice to either engage with them or not engage with them. And then what I say to myself, I really have a big impact on myself. So if I wake up in the morning and I say, oh, it's Monday, I have the day off. I have all these things that I want to do and get done. Um, I'm excited to have a day off. I'm excited to go for a walk at some point. If I'm saying that kind of stuff to myself, I am living in feelings that are really um, just kind of in my body and, and you can just feel those good feelings. But there are times when I wake up and be like, oh my God, I have a list. I've got so much to do. I've got you know, so many errands to do on my day off. I've got to do all this crap, you know. And so well, how is that feeling inside my body? Not so good. Um, so we have a choice. And there are some days when we can't help it. We're just in those bad moods and that is okay. But we have to recognize that's our, our choice, that we can really 
turn it around because I'll have to say I think I wake up most of the time in a more of a negative mindset just because I think that's just the way our brain works um and so I do have to add this conversation to myself that is the other half of that negativity and when you do that when you're talking to yourself in this way you just realize what a huge impact it is um you know it's just an amazing impact and I do think that's where the the positive uh, thinking came from and um, you know all that, that the work on positive psychology I think that's really important um, but it isn't you know there, there's more to it it isn't just um, trying to convince yourself it is really looking at this and really understanding like what's happening in your mind and and how to get out of that and the best part of that whole thing is that it's very soothing. So we're always looking for a way to improve our lives and to be happier. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, um, right now it's really challenging with COVID. And then we have all these um, shootings and there's so much in our world that we could just stay in that negativity. And, you know, when we stay in that negativity, it's just not good for us because, you know, once we're negative, then we're negative with other people. And then that spirals and that's adding to all the negativity that's already out there. So we have to take responsibility for that. And we have to try to make ourselves individually as happy as possible so that we're not prone to add to what's happening in this world. Um, so for me, I'm always looking to give myself a break. I'm always looking to say, well, how can I see what I'm seeing in my in my mind's eye or, or what's coming to me? How can I see this like in a better way? You know, if I was talking to a client, how would I talk to my client about this issue that is hitting me? What would I say to them? You know, there's always a way to kind of spin or kind of like, you know, help yourself, you know, and you want to. And, and it's not, it's not, um, it's not to be not authentic. It's to get to realize the power when you're in like a more positive mindset the power of that brings you into this soul spirit energy and that's why you want to do it so it's almost like layers so we have layers of you know the mind and then we have you know how we talk to ourselves so all these different layers that we have to kind of get through to get to this soul beautiful energy that lives within us and you know, we have to dive down to get it pretty much. And you want to. So when you're, so it's like, for me, it feels like steps. So if I'm thinking, then I'm kind of soothing that those thinking, that thinking, and then I'm talking nicer to myself. And then I'm, I'm doing nicer things. So then, I, you know, if I'm um, happier, then I'm choosing things that I like to do. And I'm choosing things that I love to do. And that feeds this energy and that feeds the, the, um, our soul, so to speak. So when we're in that soul energy, so when we really kind of bypass, we're bypassing our thoughts and our feelings and our life situations, you know, and our life situations are so important to us. Um, and it's, and we don't want to minimize them because they are really important to us and we should, really um, value them the good and the bad um, but but we don't want to miss that there's another dimension to us we don't want to miss that we have this magical part of ourselves um, and the only way to it is to is to move away from the thinking and the feelings and the talking and, and to move away from all that stuff and, and to move into the good feelings that bring you into the silence of what's inside of you you know so you know a couple you can get there a couple of ways some people are in their soul intuitive energy naturally because they just don't think that much and they don't entertain their thinking and they're just living and they go from one thing that they love to do to another thing that they love to do and you can see those people are very optimistic people and you can just look at them and say wow they're just an optimistic person and their life tends to go smoothly why because when you're in good feelings you're in your intuition and you're in your flow and you make good choices you know and you intuitively protect yourself you intuitively know what to do and what not to do so this is a real big reason to want to tap into your intuition and to the wisdom that lives within you because it is protective um, and it does help your life situation which feels limiting and which feels sometimes you can feel stuck in 
it makes you realize that there's so 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 much more to you and it's just a life enhancer um so so diving at you know or you know diving through these thoughts these feelings our life situations to get to this energy to get to this these gifts that live inside of us is really um, a magical and wonderful thing that you want to do and I think the I think the hardest part is is realizing that our stories of our lives are just that our stories of our lives and there's stories that we've written even though we feel so sometimes like our lives have happened to us we really are coloring our lives with our perceptions and you know that's where it kind of gets fun because somebody could be living my life exactly and perceive it completely different you know they could be you know more upset by my life circumstances or they could actually be you know happier you know in my life circumstances um you, you just don't know um so if perceptions are really how we see things and color them then we're we're the ones that are creating these lives so we're a lot more powerful than we think um, so if we kind of all come into this neutral slate of the world and then we're coloring our lives and our perceptions, it's really important for us to realize that these are just kind of stories and to challenge ourselves out of them. So if one person um, can see a divorce as like, you know, really the worst thing that has happened to them in their lives and another person sees it as a new beginning, um, what person's going to do better? you know and and again it's not to minimize the pain and what we have to go through when we get divorced it's never to minimize but it's to challenge ourselves and to say well you know why can't if they're doing it that way why can't i and that's the challenge right so anytime i'm going through something i look at somebody who's handling it better and i say well i'm going to do it that way <laughs> i'm going to handle it their way um, only because I realize that the benefit of that, the benefit of not being a victim of your own life is so life-giving and brings you to this energy that lives within you. And that's the key. You know, so you have to really be open. You know, you want to be open to realizing that your perspective, although it is completely right for you and is perfect for you, if it's hurting you, you don't want it. Why would you want it? You know, if I kept looking at my two divorces, not one, but my two divorces as failures, um, I could like be in a terrible position right now. Um, my life could be really unhappy if I kept rehearsing that story of, oh, I failed. You know, I don't do relationships well. Here I am a therapist and I can't do a relationship well. I've had two divorces. I mean, that's a good story. It's a good story and people would agree with me if I said that but I don't I really don't I don't believe that I believe you know I learned so much from my relationships and some of them last and some of them didn't last and for me in my life journey right now that's what's supposed to happen for me I'm not supposed to stay with one person forever and ever I'm supposed to grow and teach and 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 do what I'm doing and um and I'm really happy in doing that but if I was stuck in those thoughts and I believed those thoughts um, I wouldn't I would be in bad shape so but it was my choice it was my choice to decide I'm going to I'm not going to believe that and then what happens when you do connect to this soul spirit energy you feel that is really the truth you know you really feel that that is the truth because the soul energy always has the, the perception of your goodness and always has the perception of your growth and your magic and how much you how much value you have so that's why the benefit of of changing your perceptions of your life story is so um, valuable and and so kind of easy to do because if you think about it you know it's not that hard you know it really isn't that hard it's just up to us to say I'm letting that go you know um, and and once you do you get really good at it and and people can do it like when when we had the gratitude journals and that was a really big thing that was a really easy way for people to just look at the positive in their lives that were happening as opposed to just living in this negative so again just like what i'm talking about if you write down five things that you're grateful for at night and in the morning 
all that's doing is shifting you from your negative mindset to the positive what is actually happening but we we never we, we get so enticed by the negative and we get so caught up by the negative we never give the positive a chance to to speak or to shine and when you do that i mean i have watched people do gratitude journals and they feel so much better. I mean, they just feel so much better and they do so much better because now they're they're in the gratitude, but they're also going into their soul energy. So it's much more than just a gratitude journal, you know? Um, but if, but you do have to get to a place where you, you really feel that gratitude. If you're trying to do a gratitude journal and you're like, eh, you know, I, yeah, I'm grateful for, you know, this, and you're just not there then it's not the time to do a gratitude journal. You have to work more on your thoughts and soothing them and, and, and changing your perspective so that you can start to feel the gratitude, you know? I think for the longest time I was kind of kidding myself that I was happier than I really was. I was kind of like pretending to myself that I was a happy person. And, um, and, and, and maybe that was just my way of getting to where I am now. Now I know that when I'm out of my thoughts... And when I'm out of, you know, this talking to myself and when I'm just in life, these feelings of gratitude and joy and love, they just emerge. You don't have to try. They're just there. Um, like when I'm talking now, I can just feel them. They just come up. They, you know, the, there's no work. It's just this happiness starts to come up within you. And we all have that. And that's, that's your soul. That's your wisdom. That's your spirit. And it's not that hard to, to connect to it. So um, you could do a gratitude, start a gratitude journal and that would help you very easily connect to it and, and this realization that you're something more than your story, that your story is just your story. And if you want to over identify with your story, like if I wanted to over identify with the fact that I was divorced twice and all this stuff, I would be stuck. I'd be stuck in that. Thank God I didn't. I've always had this sense of... Um, a little bit of a detachment from life like there's more to this you know I've always had this feeling since the day I was born that I was in the situations that I was in but that the, there was always a part of me that was like this isn't it though this isn't it though this isn't the whole story and I was that was my soul spirit energy saying this is not it this there's, there's much much more to you than this situation and thank God, because if we defined ourselves by our situations, we would be depressed. And that is how people get depressed, because they are over-identifying with these things, you know? Your spirit is magical, and your spirit is wise, and your spirit is intuitive, and your spirit can talk to other spirits, and your spirits can know things about the future, and um, and and you you can heal yourself, and there's, there's tons of spiritual stuff that... Um, that if you explored, you'd find out about. There's great shows on, on TV about it. I mean, it's just a whole wealth of this other world that is so exciting and magical um, to explore. And I, I would highly recommend doing that. And, um, you know, but, but you do have to really realize it is a process and it's a journey. Um, I'm really realizing that you are just not your thoughts and you're not your life situation. You're so much bigger than your life situation. And I know that when I say that, there's a part of you that knows it, that says, oh yeah. And it's not an ego thing. It's really not an ego thing. It's a knowing. It's like, I know there's something more. There's something more. And I'm just not tapping into whatever that 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 is. I don't know what that is. I always felt like I should be, you know, more successful than I was. And I never knew what the heck that was, you know. Um, was that my ego just wanting more money and, and, you know, more attention? You know, I didn't know what it was. But really what it was, it was my soul saying, expand more. You can expand more, you know. Um, like, don't limit yourself. You know, why are you limiting yourself? So really, our challenge, you know, if we're up for it, and, you know, we love challenges, you know, we love exercise challenges and we love all kinds of challenges the challenge is really not to believe these thoughts that come into your mind and when you're being negative with yourself to say can I can I feed myself something nicer you know um can I look at any situation differently um I was trying to get blood work the other day and um two of the labs were closed and initially I was like Ugh, you know really <laughs> a little pissed and then I thought to myself, wait a minute, you know, I haven't been out and driving and it was beautiful out and I had the music blasting 
and I just had the best time and then I went food shopping and it turned out to be just like a beautiful morning but if I hadn't made that shift out of that ugh, you know I probably would have just driven home and been like annoyed do you know so I'm constantly looking at situations that annoy me or upset me and switching it for my own benefit I do that for my own benefit because then I live in an energy within myself that's just happy you know and more connected to that soul energy that intuitive energy so it, it there is a really good reason to I guess look to the pot look to you know um, being more positive with yourself or to be more loving with yourself or to be more gentle with yourself you know I, I think um, we have this this idea that we should be so harsh you know like don't spoil yourself and um, you know I read, wrote about that in my first book that um, the forgotten friend that you have to really be your own best friend and that's out there a lot now thank goodness you know a lot of people are talking about that but it's really really true it can sound like just words but really it's really really true you want to always look to see why you're doing what you're doing and that there's always a really good reason for it you're not a mean person or a terrible person there's always a reason for why we're doing what we're doing and when we move more out of our thoughts and we move more into our lives you know so instead of thinking we can live when we do that um, it's very easy to connect to this intuitive voice that lives within you and then that's when it really gets fun and magical because you hear things that are just beautiful and loving and you can write and you can talk from a different place and you can understand people from a different place. It has, it has really enhanced my work with people because I can really understand where they're caught in their thoughts and how they're so far from their soul and their spirit, so far away and so identified with their thoughts and their story and um, and that takes us can take us if we're only in the negative part of our story if that's what we're talking about all the time it takes us not to a good place it's like watching um, a sad movie all day long like we don't want to do that you know we want to watch the movies that um, you know the person overcomes and is successful you know we love those movies right so we want to have that in our lives too we don't just want the one half of the negativity so realizing that you're more than your story is really important realizing that you have something within you that is so magical and so intuitive and so brilliant is really the way to go and the only way to get to it is by detaching a little bit from your story detaching a little bit from these thoughts that just want to say the same critical thing to you and to just really feel that spirit in you and what does that have to say you know what does that voice say you know and when you really listen to that voice you'll just be amazed you'll be floored you'll just um, be really happy and content so um, connect to that wisdom that lives within you and we'll talk again soon. So take care. Bye-bye.